Um, talk to us first about this decision uh, to cut back uh, pretty immediately here on capital expenditures to meet new expectations of demand. What is going on? So, so I, I'd love to, but let me take a step back and sort of give you a sense, you and your viewers, what we've actually announced. So, um, you know, as, as the global cannabis leader, we've taken definitive action today. So important steps in positioning Aurora for long-term success. And what I mean by that is we've taken some concrete steps to strengthen our balance sheet. And you saw a lot of that as we announced in terms of the early conversion of our convertible debenture. Um, obviously, some, some and, and to your point about some capex spending, we've, we've decided to put on hold two major projects that will save us $200 million. And that's important because we see um, uh, an ability to be able to scale those projects up as we see global demand come on. So, uh, but we're very well positioned based on our existing facilities to sort of meet our current needs. The other thing we're doing is, by virtue of our, our, our industry-leading gross margins, we're, we're driving to near-term profitability. And so in this evolving market, those margins and our low cost of production at 85 cents a gram really positions us nicely to deliver near-term profitability, I think, quicker than any of our peers. And we continue to be incredibly focused on the U.S. market and something we're aggressively pursuing with the help of Nelson Peltz. I understand all that, and especially the long-term strategy. But when recreational's down 33 quarter on quarter, what's going? Why is that? So, great question, Carl. So, uh, we guided this back back in our September sort of uh, Q4 release. Um, there were two key issues that that needed to be resolved. One is there was a backlog of inventory within the provincial distribution centers, and that's cleaning its way out. So, we knew that in Q1 we were going to see this sort of, um, if you want, slow slower. Um, uh, ordering, if you want, from the provinces. And two, there's not enough retail outlets in Canada. And that's a common theme that we've heard from all of our peers. It's true. Um, even with our significant ranking in this, in this country, or we're number one and number two, in key markets like Ontario and Quebec, there are certainly not enough retail outlets. And so we, we're encouraged that that's moving in the right direction. Um, and with the rollout of 2.0, this is a new, um, um, a new market of derivative products that are coming out around the Christmas time frame. We're very well prepared for that. We see that as a tremendous opportunity relative to our margins to really sort of capitalize on that opportunity and really help grow our business into the 2020 calendar year. Now, Michael, you mentioned the partnership with Nelson Peltz. It's about six months old now. Um, how is that shaping up and, you know, in terms of uh, getting additional partnerships um, in the consumer world to strengthen your business? So, so great question. Nelson continues to be very active uh, with us and, and helping us uh, in a number of discussions we have with these global CPG companies. It's actually all part of a U.S. strategy for us. We see the U.S. as an opportunity for us to use as a platform to really grow, not just in the U.S., but in this kind of the, the CPG world globally. Um, and Nelson, with his connections and obviously his, his help in, in, in helping us sort of navigate through multiple discussions with multiple partners in different industry verticals. We're confident that when we do make an announcement about how we see and how we're going to enter the U.S. market, it's going to tie together the numerous discussions we have with Nelson's help with a lot of these sort of mature CPG companies and how we're going to be able to leverage that in different industry verticals going forward. So we're very excited how about uh, an announcement when, that's, when we're ready to do so. How close are you in turning some of those discussions into actual announcements, though? Um, look, we haven't provided any guidance, but because we're talking to numerous partners in different industry verticals, we want to make sure that when we do announce it, it is clear to the market where, you know, the direction we're going. And, and again, we're going to use the U.S. as an opportunity to, as a platform, if you want, for us to really sort of explore um, and, and continue to develop out these CPG opportunities on a global scale. Yesterday we had uh, the CEO of Canopy join us, uh, expressing similar frustrations with the lack of growth and, and outlets that you just referred to. Same question I asked him, I'll ask you. How long is it going to take for the inventory that's already there to, to burn off? I'll say it again. Um, how long will that take, in your opinion, uh, given all the different things you're doing here to obviously try to maintain some margin? I would think the end demand, though, remains the key question. So, great question. I think you've seen some of that backlog clean up. Uh, you've seen the provinces return a significant amount of product to, you know, to certain of the licensed producers. Um, to date, Aurora has not had that uh, experience that. So we're in a good position. We believe our products are in, in high demand. And so we don't expect that we're going to see the, the, you know, the, the, the returns that our peers have seen. I think with 2.0 coming out, so this new derivative market coming out, we are, I believe, better prepared than any of our peers. And given our high margins and our low cost of production, 
I think we're in a unique, uh, a, an exciting position to really capitalize on that going into calendar 2020. And I, I think with, you know, with, with the right um, uh, launch of those products that we're ready for, not just on the initial launch, but we're ready for follow on orders. That's something we're going to very quickly be able to capitalize on. And that'll drive us to near term profitability. So you're not worried overall that your industry has overestimated the overall demand for cannabis in Canada? Um, it's a great question. I think we haven't taken our eye off the big picture. We see a huge, the, the, the long-term uh, vision here hasn't changed. I think what you've seen is just kind of a short-term sort of, if you want, level setting. Um, so, so no, and that's obviously why we've made the decision, if you want, to slow down two of our bigger projects and, and, and almost park those uh, to a point at which we believe we'll see the, the global demand sort of pick up and be able to launch those. So. Um, no, we're, we're, we're confident that, um, you know, the market is just sort of, you know, uh, I think, adjusting, if you want to, um, uh, you know, some of the issues that I just described in terms of the provincial sort of challenges. Um, and that demand is there. I think it's just our job is going to be to effectively try to remove as much as we can from the unregulated market to the regulated market. And you're going to see a lot of that sort of happen with the, with the launch of our 2.0, uh, our cannabis 2.0 uh, products. Finally, I wonder if you think the uh, concerns uh, this summer about cannabis vaping specifically have had a material effect on demand. Are we seeing that in sales of uh, vaping derivatives? Um, well, remember, in Canada, those vaping, uh, the vape pens, the vaping products aren't coming out until Christmas. But what I can tell you is, you know, different than what you see in the U.S., in Canada, there are not, we, we are not going to be able to have any additives or, dilu or uh, additives or dilutives in those vape products, and so that's important. We're also working very closely with Health Canada to meet, to ensure that we meet or exceed those those safety standards. So the products that we're going to be putting out are going to be safe, uh, and to ensure that our consumers are not in any way at risk. We also put out certificates of analysis, and that really does help, I, I think, you know, give confidence to the market that the products we're putting out are safe, free of contaminants, and I think gives consumers, uh, uh, you know, the comfort I think that they need to ensure that those products are going to be safe that they buy off the shelf.